What makes a shape attractive? Attractiveness is the combination of two factors, familiarity and surprise. Why do you need familiarity and why do you need surprise? Familiarity helps you to get the public's attention, while surprise allows you to keep it. Now, let's try some shapes. If you ever start, try a simple shape. Really, really simple. You know, uh, how to curve and how something else. The shape here is not really interesting because it doesn't get you. See? It's not something you've seen in real life. However, you can compare it to something you've ever seen. Could be a skull. No, really. Could be a football. Could be many round things you've ever seen. Could be an insect. You saw, or you know, other round things. The familiarity of the shape is relative to your reference. But there are some shapes that we all know. Spheres really are the best example. But they're not surprising enough. Now, you wouldn't know how you'd use this object. It's round. But that's it. They had some surprise. Had some complexity. An angle. A curve, another angle, another curve, inward, outward, inward, and outward. Here you have a more complex shape, but still simple enough for you to identify it. So, it's a relatively good balance of familiarity and surprise. Now, if we try to complexify this shape, what could we do? Could extend it. Outward or inward. Always using some curves and some angles. Now, how could we complexify it even further? Same. Develop it. Outward, inward. And complexify your shape progressively. But it's still not really interesting. Because it's just a shape. You see it now, but you couldn't tell if it was a, an object. Let's try an object. This is simple enough. This is familiar enough. Now, how would we add some complexity to this object? Well, they needed the rubber. Do you need maybe a familiar mark on it in order to know it's yours? You need some maybe some, some extra symbols, you know, some form of appropriation, symbols that, that are specific to you, things that you know, things that you want, or that you don't know but you will want. Now you can add even another object if you really want to. Add complexity to this. Still, yeah, it, it, it's familiar enough. But it's not surprising enough. Let's return to the to the precedent sheet. We got this pattern: curve and angle, curve and angle, and curve, and then you can extend this object by putting another object inside angle or well, straight line really angle curve think about movement it's the most important thing now you want to add even more complexity and define who this character is and there are some multiple ways to, to do it really Good idea now of how to balance 
familiarity and surprise. But we don't know how to develop each of these characters independently. Uh, let's focus on surprise. The surprise may be the most important of the two. We may all know what familiar is. We see things right now. Now, what's a screen for? Screen allow you to represent. But what do you want to represent? Because you can represent anything on the screen. Though. If you if you know how to develop the proper uh, three, three dimensional, how to develop the volume, of what you represent. What is this? So, it's supposedly an animal. It has limbs, has a head, has some form of torso, maybe. Could call that a hip. Can't recognize it because it has a head, eyes, mouth, some standard features you have in animals. Now, not all animals have eyes. Not all animals have mouth per se. Some of them have proboscis. That's a layer of complexity, but it it requires that you remove the mouth really because. The proposes will replace it. In some cases you won't have two kinds of mouth really. One which is here, a tongue, and a proboscis, which may serve as a nose. Um, and constraint here. Because that may be the word that helps you create surprise. Constraint not gonna change that. Helps you to create surprise. But the environment in which this is born, the environment in which it has developed, gives it its specific features. Now, do we need more features? Well, maybe some form of saturation here. We don't really need that many features on one single creature. But we can complexify and see uh, to which extent we could push the concept now. With more limbs, with maybe a second head, smaller head here, you know, kind of not really useful. But you know, you had complexity here, and you had potentially surprise. Which leads us to the next point: complexity, extra layers of complexity, does not essentially equal to surprise. Let's we start with. The simpler shape we had at the beginning. Angle, curve, angle, curve, and so on. We could get back to the to the t-shirt analogy, but let's try something more abstract. I'm gonna put a head here, a head and a neck, subsequently, which come out of this. So this could be a piece of cloth, could be a piece of armor, it could be also a house. Really. You know, if you imagine that that's a house, and you could get out of the house, but you imagine that on the other side there's a little you know, handle that helps to get out of this. The mechanism with maybe a key or a card, which is really a key with another form, helps you get out of this. This is your house for as long as you want to. You know, there's a heat system in it, you don't need to see it. There's a, some form of sustenance system in it too. Because you, 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 you shouldn't need external food with, with a house like that. You know, it's, it's a great house. And maybe there's a way for you to be entertained. But entertainment comes essentially when you have an object which gets into contact with your head. Whereas, here, nothing is in contact with your head, so how can you get entertained? Well, you can imagine that there's a projection system coming from this, you know, projecting an image on a screen that only, can you, uh, only you can see. This image, how does it work? You know, light projection here, you need a cylinder. Projects light, on the screen, which appears 
when you click inside the trigger here and allows you not to be entertained actually the the rest of the house the rest of the body house doesn't need to have any any external object everything can be inside the source of food can be inside the shelter itself is inside because you know your mattress is inside the room uh, the heat system or more accurately the temperature regulation system is inside everything for your comfort and for your safety is inside but why is your head outside that, that may be a problem in terms of defense uh, let, let's figure out that in this world people's head are not really what matters because there's nothing substantial in the air what matters is in the body so the very creature we have here has a plain head it's, it's well maybe empty except for you know something like one eye which allows it to uh, to see the exterior world and to watch what's on the screen something else something simpler something that doesn't require some extra context let's take this shape well, I said it would be simpler actually simpler to watch the rest of the video this is a fairly complex shape and can argue it's can argue it's a beast really. Why is it this form? And that's the why. The, the why is, is really an important for that. It's also sometimes a useless word. Do you need to understand why it has this form? Not really. You can, you can enjoy it, you know, for its aesthetic aspect. Uh, let's figure that this creature has eyes on multiple places. And it's not just random eyes. You know, it's familiar, you get eyes, multiple places, but it's surprising because it's not all eyes. No, constraints, constraints help you to keep fairly surprising objects. The eyes should be placed on location which look like faces. And there, with a creature like that, you combine both familiarity and surprise but as you can see it's a limited surprise because you expect an animal to have eyes but you don't necessarily expect it to have eyes everywhere you expect an animal to have eyes on the face but you don't expect them to have multiple faces when you've got all these questions answered, you can ask yourself why. And then, as with the body bed, you put back the question on the why and why it's like this. Maybe it has multiple heads because it's a multi form of life. It's, it's multiple organisms in one. Maybe there's another reason.